Hi, my name is Ajay Chari. I'm a professor of medicine at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York. And it's a really exciting time in myeloma. Uh, T-cell redirection, which is something that we never thought would be possible given the significant immune compromise that our myeloma patients have with all the therapies they've had over the years since their diagnosis. And yet we're seeing outstanding responses in phase one dose escalation studies. And clearly there's a lot of interest in CAR-T, but I think the reason we need more than CAR-T is because we know, for example, when looking at transplants, a relatively small percentage of transplant of patients get transplant globally, even those who may be eligible, but there's also a sizable non-transplant eligible population. So we need other therapies. And fortunately, we have bispecifics, which are off the shelf, uh, can be delivered uh, ideally even in the community. After, uh, we can talk about the initial uh, dose escalation part, but uh, these are off the shelf um, treatments and they're monoclonal antibodies that can be given. And it's nice to then uh, afford a larger pool of patients, exciting therapies, and also um, perhaps patients with more comorbidities than may be able to get CAR-T. So for that reason, there's a lot of excitement. And I would say that there's three primary targets for bispecifics that have, for which we have clinical data. I won't say much about CD38 because that is a, a well-known target, uh, the target of both daratumumab and isatuximab. And while there are bispecifics and trispecifics exploring that target, we have yet to get clinical data. So for the three targets for which we do have clinical data, first is BCMA, B-cell maturation antigen, um, and we know that this is an important target when you knock it out in mice, it uh, disrupts plasma cell survival and antibody production, making it an ideal target for uh, myeloma patients. And we have now three MOAs for this target, including antibody drug conjugates, the uh, bispecifics and CAR-T. So bispecifics, um, there's, uh, I think, innumerable compounds, and they vary in terms of route of administration, uh, IV versus sub-Q schedule, the need for priming doses, um, time to getting approved in the market, probably closest will be to clistamab, uh, which we anticipate in the U.S. getting accelerated approval later this year. So uh, that is a really exciting target. And as a whole, all these bispecifics, I would say, despite these being phase one dose escalation studies are showing responses at a variety of doses, but at the RP2D, we're seeing about 60 to 80% response rates um, and the primary toxicity is CRS, which uh, ranges again in 60 to 80%, primarily grade one. And then the unique side effect of BCMA is probably going to be the hypogamma upwards of 70% with infectious complications, including COVID related deaths. So it's really important to use COVID therapeutic strategies, whether it's prophylactic antibodies, therapeutic antibodies, or oral medications. The next target that's being explored is GPRC 5D, for which telquetamab has been. Uh, presented clinically, and uh, again, 60 to 80% response rate. Uh, interestingly, not a significant infectious signal. And what both, what all of these constructs share is relatively specificity. So G BCMA primarily expressed on plasma cells, a little bit on other B cells, but not other toxic, uh, not other cells or tissues. GPRC5D, again, primarily overexpressed in myeloma cells. Um, and interestingly, when when we're treating patients, we're not seeing the profound hypogamma or infectious complications, but because GPRC is expressed on heavily, heavily keratinized tissues, which includes the nail and um, palms and soles, we do see some desquamation and nail changes, which are quite uh, manageable with the, the skin being emollients and then usually early on. Also, we're seeing dyscusia, perhaps due to salivary gland expression uh, and some weight loss grade one, two. Primary management of that is uh, dose holds and reductions. And, Last but certainly not least is FCRH5, for which the clinical uh, compound is, top, is uh, called Sevastamab. And uh, FCRH5 is, uh, we think is overexpressed primarily, uh, especially in patients with chromosome one amplification, but again, a target that's overexpressed on plasma cells and less so on other cells. And the uh, antibody targeting this is resulting in, um, again, 60 to 80% response rate, uh, really no significant non-heme toxicity, maybe a little bit of grade one diarrhea, and then the infection signal probably lies somewhere in between talquetamab and the BCMA products, uh, but um, I think it is important to monitor. And all of these, again, have the CRS low grades, um, cytopenias, typically in cycle one is the most prominent, but it is really an exciting time to have so many options for our patients, uh, including off-the-shelf bispecifics. 
Um, and of course, stay tuned not only just for bispecific updates, but tri-specific, where uh, can you now engage three different antigens concurrently, uh, be it on the NK cell, myeloma cell, um, and the T cell. So uh, thank you for your attention and uh, look forward to seeing you all at a conference soon.